Now, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, where you are joining this from. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank all of you for joining this uh, uh, initiative and uh, taking this proactive step to learn security. Today, we will be looking at something called as bot attacks. Now, today we will be looking at one breed of attacks, and that is called as bot attacks. A lot of us have interacted with bots sometime or the other in our life where maybe you may have called an IVR or an interactive voice recording and you are being fed information, being asked for information. And uh, that was a completely automated way of collecting data from you. You may also have gone to a site and uh, proactively you get a chat bot uh, just interacting with you. And depending on the responses that you are giving, the bot is able to help you identify the issue and even get issues resolved as well. Now, those are some of the things that are being automated. In security, often it happens that things are designed for a good purpose, but they end up being used for a bad purpose. The best example of this are the viruses. Did you know that the viruses were actually written as a part of a design software where the authors wanted this code to be hidden and sent out to the users so that maybe they could monitor the users or get some feedback or even try to get some, uh, have some more actions being done. However, some people with malicious intent identify this hidden code and thought, what if you could elevate the privileges using a virus and you spread it in the network and bam, there you have. So a lot of these times, the functionalities that we build are actually being misused. Today, we'll be looking at some of those attacks. Uh, I think in my previous, uh, in the previous slide, uh, this was already covered, but just to give a, a bit more brief, I've been having experience on different, on both the sides of the table. I have been, uh, I have been the evangelist of products being done by product companies that dealt into web security. I've also been uh, designing the, the security of websites myself. And that involves, uh, that involves load testing, that involves doing a tabletop attack where we attack the things ourselves and monitor the response time. Is our website able to withstand this attack? During my stint with Walmart, I remember, uh, okay, how many, uh, uh, okay, so in this uh, Zoom, there's this feature of raising your hand. So raise your hand if you know about the holidays that happen in the US. The holiday season in US. It's very special. And it happens nearly around uh, around December and Christmas. December, December, Christmas Eve. Yes. Before uh, January. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Because a lot of leaves, you know. There's no scope for leaves that those days. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Rahima. Thanks a lot, Yatin, for raising your hand. Now, what happens is if a website, let's say, is receiving hundred X as the amount of traffic that they get over a month. During the holiday period, they can expect 400x or even 500x traffic. Why? Because everyone wants to get that deal. It's always about the culture. The culture in every, com in every country is different. In the US, it is, it's a culture that they will release these special deals and you are able to buy that special iPhone X at half the price at midnight when the deal is uh, released by the company. And everyone literally jumps on that. They want to open up that pitch, add it to the cart, and make the payment and get the transaction completed. So you can imagine the amount of load that the server will be getting during this period is happening. And how does a company like Walmart uh, plan for this? The way to plan for this is by, by doing your own load test. If you are expecting 500x, you test for 1500x in advance. You do it six months in advance. Uh, three months again, two months again. So these rounds of tests keep happening. But a lot of times, what's actually missed is apart from the load, you also have security events happening in parallel. And that is where when these deals are happening, the sites are vulnerable the most. In India, we may have seen a lot of uh, sales happening in some of the e-commerce sites like Flipkart or any other e-commerce site. And what happens is, the moment that they start that deal, in a few minutes, you might see that the website is maybe slow or it might not be usable. 
and people start reporting these issues over Twitter or Facebook and in, in any other uh, social media channel. But truly what's happening is a lot of times there's a background attack which is happening on the server, keeping the server busy, where out of the 500x traffic that the server is receiving, actually 400x is coming from a bot. It's coming from attackers and only 100x traffic is coming from the real users. And this is the impact that the bots have. And this is what we are going to look at today in, the, in today's session. At any point of time, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to put that question in the chat and I'll be able to take up that question at the end of this uh, session. We'll be looking at some of the approaches towards the bot problems. Okay, let's understand what is the bot problem. Now, when you speak to any, when you speak to an admin of any website and uh, uh, when you have the uh, speak to the admin of any website, you can ask them how much bot traffic do you receive or and how much of the total traffic do you receive? It's very easy to uh, see the total traffic because all you have to do is go to the portal and you will say that, okay, today we received 25 GB of total request and we served all of them. And now if you ask them how many of them came from real users and how many of them came from bots, you might not get a real answer over there. You might even get blank faces because people don't know how much of bot traffic and how much of real traffic they're getting. They won't know until they get attacked. This is what the companies think that they're getting, that this blue line is the real, real traffic and the red line is the bot traffic. And this is what it actually looks like. This is the blue line. You have some of the gray bots. You have some of these orange, which are actually the good bots. Uh, and these good bots could be like Google or Bing because when you search for a brand, let's say, uh, let's say I search for Louis Philippe in Google. Now, what determines if Louis Philippe is the first search results is how the site was crawled. What is the page rank? And that is defined by if the Google bot was able to access your site and make sure that it is on top. But if the Google have that, so that's also a direct impact that the bots have. If we dig deeper, you come to know that there are different types of attacks here. You have search engines sending traffic, uh, you have site development and monitoring, something like a catch point where all they have to do is it's a bot or there's an automated program which is present in all, all the countries in the world and they will keep accessing site and identify, okay, if I'm accessing your site from China, it's loading in three seconds. I'm loading it in India, it's loading in one second. And in the US, it loads in 0.5 seconds. So that kind of gives you a picture of how the performance is happening. So these are the site development and monitoring bots. And there are other types of bots as well. And 63% is actually the user traffic that the site is receiving. Now, what happens in bot management is, as a concept is that you have different types of impacts of bots when it comes to a website. You have the IT impact and you have the business impact. What do, you, what do I mean by IT impact is, if you know that you are going to receive 500x traffic, then maybe I will have five servers who are able to have that load and serve that traffic. That means I have to invest in those five servers and keep them ready. However, you prepared for five, but you received only one X, then your four servers are running idle and they are nothing but a cost to your company. On the contrary, you prepared for five, but you received 1500X traffic. In that case, your five servers are not going to suffice and you'll have to keep adding servers again and again. And in fact, if those servers go down, in that case, the site's performance will be impacted. And that brings us to the business impact. The business impact here is if, let's say I am a loyal customer for a website for the last 15 years, uh, but if the site gets attacked, in that case, I may think twice before going to the site again and doing an online transfer or, or, or any online transaction for that matter. Now, a uh, question from Prashant was about identifying site traffic, which one is uh, good bot traffic and user traffic. I think we'll be covering that in the coming slides. And yes, CAPTCHA, Nilanjan is 
a way to identify and rather uh, to challenge a user, which is also a type of uh, a challenge, is type of a response to an attack. We'll cover that in the coming slides. So uh, bots, bots can have two types of impact, the IT impact and the business impact. Business impact is where your site's credibility might be lost. Business impact is where if a scraper comes and steals the prices of the, the products that you're trying to sell and those prices to a competitor, you just lost your competitive edge over your competitors. And a lot of times those prices are being created with the help of discussions that took over months with the actual vendors. So if after doing so much of hard work, if your competitor gets the advantage, that is direct business impact to your business because of the bots. Now, there are different types of bots as we saw. We have search engines, you have partners, you have harmful scrapers, you have spam bots. Spam bots are the ones who, uh, who typically attack the, the form fields, they attack the comment section where they might start either putting garbage data in the form fields or in your comment section if you have a blog and it's a very popular blog or they can start uh, sending hate messages. There are bots that have been created where they will distribute their presence throughout the world but the message will be the same. The message theme will be a very negative uh, comment about your blog or a website that you may have. So different types of bots. So if you should look at the business impact, uh, you have the origin load, which means your website or your servers are always busy. Blue line is the user traffic. Red line is the bot traffic. Then you also have different types of uh, bots that you want to allow, like Google bot, you definitely want to allow. Uh, maybe your SEO bots, you certainly want to allow. But if someone wants to grab your inventory, which means if it comes to mobiles, what all different types of mobiles are you selling? If it comes to e-retail, then everything that you have in your SKU or your stock keeping unit, that can be scraped by the bots on a regular basis. And there is a way you can defend against these kind of attacks. Now, every industry has faced this kind of a problem. And as you can see, e-commerce and healthcare are the ones that have been uh, hit by sophisticated bots. And when it comes to bot traffic, the, the gambling and the airlines are the ones that receive most amount of traffic. Here, the segregation happens between bot traffic versus the complexity of the attack because the complexity might not need one GB of traffic to be sent. The complex attacks or sophisticated attacks might be able to do their job in just a few requests, whereas an actual DDoS attack would need like GBs and TBs of traffic being sent as was done in Mirai. Now, what happens when you block a bot? Now, what happens when you block a bot is they will mutate. And the reason that happens is whoever is running these bots, there's actually a valuable business for them. They're earning money through these bot traffic. And this money is not small money. People have been earning millions of dollars by, uh, by scraping the websites or airline uh, prices. They have been earning millions of dollars by stealing the stock keeping units and selling them on the black market. And when you stop getting that data, they will quickly go and check, oh, I'm getting blocked. I just changed my signature. I will look very different now. And now I'll continue to attack. And that will send you back to your first place. Oh, how does the bot look like? and how do I block it? So the more you keep blocking this bot, it will keep changing its signature until you give up or your website goes down. But the bots will try to do evasion. They will try to, uh, they will try to change their signature every now and then to hide from the security teams. And that's truly where the management of the bots can be done, where blocking is not the best thing to do. What you really can do is there are multiple strategies with which you can handle the bots. Number one is what I have seen being done in a lot of corporates is they have special server farms being created only for bots. If it's a Google bot, they have a separate server serving only Google bot. If it's a Bing bot, they have a separate server for that as well. 
And the more and more and the better reporting that you can do, which means when you go and speak to your CXO and the, your CXO is asking, what is the ROI of this product for the last one year? That is where you can say we have blocked this much of bots, this much of bandwidth, and that directly translates to this much of money. Remember, as a security professional, if you are able to quantify your attacks when it comes to the business impact in dollars, then you would have a lot of value, whichever market you go, be it a virus or an antivirus, be it a firewall, or be it secure coding, or be it a WAF. If you are able to quantify what you're protecting, you have a lot of value in the market. Different types of uh, responses. Uh, Nilanjan had mentioned capture. Now block is where, okay, let's say if user agent header contains this value, then I'm going to block it. And all of us have solved captcha. Well, maybe you are uh, signing up for a new service or you are trying to create a new username. Then you have, we have used captcha. And what it does is it gives you a challenge. A real user will go and click on that button. And what that does is in the background, it's running a lot of scripts. And those scripts verify that it's a browser. You're rendering that screen on a certain image or a certain display screen, which a bot or a script will not be able to do. You can serve from cache, you can serve from alternate origin servers, as I had mentioned. So these are some of the responses um, that would happen. Now, earlier there was a question on how do you identify if the traffic is coming from a bot or if it's coming from uh, a real user? There are many things that we can, we can do it. Number one is if you look at the way in which the requests or anyone is accessing a website, maybe let's say take an example of a travel website. I'll go to the site, I'll say, okay, I want to go from Bangalore to Singapore on this date. And then when I get the list of flights, I'm going to spend five minutes looking at the, the flight options, choose my flight, give my options, give my details, and then make the payment. Which means my, uh, if, I, if I were to plan or plot a graph of my requests, it would be very high in the beginning. It will go down and then a little bit more activity further. Whereas a bot, all it has to do because it's a script, it's just keep, it will keep sending request after request at a constant rate. And that is how you can identify bots. Now there are more smart bots which can be captured with the help of advanced techniques like uh, client level script injection and there are many other things that you can do. All right, with this, I'm going to wrap up the session today uh, honoring the time but I'm really, really looking forward to interacting with all of you on various subjects in the coming, uh, in the coming months. And uh, that's it from me.